for that big doom drop after it did get counted so hard. But would you do the honors of introducing these two players for us? Most certainly, Maddles. We are here, of course, on Akalon Way, so we have a TVP here. It's game number two, all the best of nine, between the Blue Terran players spawning at the bottom right-hand corner of the map, Western Wolves, a latest signing. Ladies and gentlemen, we have Morrow. And his opponent in the, the top left corner of the map as the red Protoss player representing FX Open EU. A very, very strong Protoss player who's been posting good results of late. Can he do it in this best of nine? It is Baby Knight. I think he can. I'm, I'm going to say he can do it purely because I want to see nine games. That's... Well, I'd love to see this go to the ninth game. We saw our best of five undercard match go all the way to the fifth match. So there is no reason why we can't also see this show match go all the way to game number nine. That would take us into the wee hours of the morning. But if the Starcraft has been as good as we've seen so far and as exciting, I've got no problem with that. Now, I want to know your opinion, Jorisar, on a little minor thing. Have you noticed the production tab has changed quite significantly? Yes, I have. It's really um, the one thing I like most about it as a caster is being able to click on something and immediately getting taken to where it's actually happening. Because occasionally you have someone maybe upgrading out of one building rather than another and it a lot depends on positioning or something like that. It's really useful just to be able to click on it straight away and know where on the map you're looking. Uh, a lot of the time you're focusing on three or four different things at once and it's impossible to see where everything is. So for me, that feature is actually really useful. I think it's really cool as well. And it works on all the different tabs as well, by the way, for units as well. And you've also got an upgrades tab now, because I know this is your first time casting it. So there's lots of cool things you can do. Yeah, I noticed that. Although it's uh, 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 trying to remember it's G instead of U, because I keep hitting back to the units tab <laughs> instead of upgrades. But yeah, no, it's really, really good stuff they've done with the UI here in the heart of the swamp. And now in terms of what these two players are doing, we've got yet again a command center first out of Moro. Meanwhile, for Baby Knight, he's gone one Gabe, one Gas, and is going to take a Nexus now. He's got enough money in bringing the probe down. So this is a very similar build to what we saw in game one. The double barracks follow up is very, very normal. And all in all, it's going to be a long macro game because this map yep. suits itself to it as well. For both of these players, the third um, behind the destructible rocks and also the rock tower there is relatively easy to secure. So I think we should see that taken relatively quickly. And then we'll wait and see where they go from that. But so far, it's looking like it's going to be pretty passive for the early game. Yeah, I think so. I mean, there's just... <sighs> At the moment, especially after game number one, Morrow really has to think about how much he wants to commit to his engagements. Uh, and I think we saw a perfect example of that in game number one where Baby Knight dropped the recall and absolutely demolished Morrow's attack. He needs to be completely certain uh, when he's going into an engagement that he knows he's going to succeed with it. Otherwise, he risks it just falling on itself and he doesn't want to have that happen two games in a row. That was the defining point in game number one, like you correctly mentioned, and he's not going to want the same thing to happen again. So this defensive posture he's likely to be taking is completely the correct decision. I agree. And in terms of what Baby Knight's doing, he's not committing to anything as of yet. He's also starting his Mothership Core a lot later. And that, I think, is a wise move because... Whereas a map like Daybreak, you can run in behind the main, it's not too big of a map. Whereas obviously here, it's a very large map. You wouldn't get your Mothership Core over there to deal damage very quickly. And you don't really gain much by getting it out soon because neither can the Terran come and attack you too quickly. So as such, I think that both of these two adjusting their, I think Baby Knight's adjustments and also Morrow's adjustments are the right thing to be doing right now. And judging from his current playstyle, I would imagine Baby and I will get that Mothership Core out, if at all, at around the kind of 45-ish supply, similar to where White Ra would get it off of mm -hmm. two bases. Well, let's see. I mean, he's, uh, of course, there's still plenty of time for him to do. He's up to 40 supply now, so there's not too much time left. He's going up to four gateways. We'll be able to get enough units out to adequately defend himself against any sort of early aggression. In the meantime, Morrow taking his third gas now. We have Stim on the way as well. And everything just looking pretty normal from both sides at this point. I'd say it is. It's... I don't want to say this in a negative way, but it's looking very much like Wings of Liberty. And I don't think that's a problem, and I actually quite like the dynamic where not too much has changed. The Mothership Core, as we saw in Game 1, has massively changed things in a way that I don't think a lot of people have experienced yet. And Jorasar, you've just been kicked out of the game, unfortunately. 
That's correct. Unfortunately, uh, the Heart of the Swarm beta has literally just crashed for me, so it looks like you're going to have to go on this game a little bit on your own for a while, but I do have the video feed from Nick, so I will be able to follow. That will be brilliant. Now, of course, we do see at the moment Baby Knight trying to put on some aggression. He's trying to push up in three bunkers, or well, one bunker already down, two additional bunkers on their way out for Morrow now. He sees there's a lot of pressure. It's a four gate play off of two bases. There is the proxy pylon down by the watchtower. And as such, this is going to be a tough hold, but there's very few sentries. And as a result, the SCVs are getting nice repair ops. And force fields now just hitting, trying to prevent the repair. But of course, the second bunker finishing up just in time. The third bunker is nearly done. The repair is going to force this push back for the moment. And yeah, as we've got, it looks like Morrow is going to be very comfortable indeed. We do have Baby Knight trying to come around the side to knock out these destructible rocks at the edge of the natural. I think that's a smart move for him because then he can engage these bunkers one at a time, which makes them a lot less effective. They're not spread out as much as they are by the entrance to the natural. So as we go here, the rocks are getting taken down. Morrow has noticed though he's repositioned most of his army he's even flying the factory down there to land it in order to create a bit more of a choke if it can get there in time but already we see the gateway units are on their way up SCV's getting pulled some good force fields preventing the repair on the bunker but it still just goes down and not enough shots go off and due to the number of marines due to stim we're seeing straight away baby knight being forced back he's lost quite a few units and as we can see he's lost about 270 more resources than that of his opponent at the moment so as we can see a full retreat coming down from baby knight now who is just happily getting up charge getting up the plus one armor for ground and he's also got his robotic facility there and now just chucking down that templar archives so all in all morrow defended that well he's sitting there He's still in the game very nicely. The attack from Baby Knight didn't do enough damage, but of course Baby Knight was able to just tech behind and was able to just produce workers behind. And that's really what you want to do, isn't it, Jorasa? And I don't. Sorry, think... mate. No, I am here at the moment because <laughs> I can only see half the screen. So I'm following your commentary and trying to figure out what's going on. But uh, sadly, I think I may have to rejoin you for the next game on the grounds that I can either see half the screen on Skype or see the entire screen on stream, but be about 15 seconds behind. That is rather problematic, isn't it? That is not the ideal situation, but of course for these two players at the moment, I'd say Morrow is in the ideal situation. He's picking off that proxy pylon. He's held off the aggression very well. He's taking his third base behind this. Baby Knight is also trying to take his third, but we see these Marines, Marauders and Medivacs on their way forward. He's got a sizable force. Of course, Storm will not be done in time. It's only 40 seconds complete out of the 110 it takes. And with that, there is a severe lack of splash damage and AOE damage needed to deal with a large infantry force. Morrow is just starting to push forward. The Observer is giving Baby Knight all the information he needs. Some force fields are hitting, but there is only the one sentry picking up with the medevacs, dropping them on the other side of the ramp. And of course, we are seeing now Good amounts of damage being done. There are a few High Templar there, but Storm is still a long way from complete. The Zealots trying to charge in as best they can. It is 1-0 upgrades for the Terran compared to 0-1 for the Protoss. And we're seeing now just some good damage being done. The Robotics Facility is getting targeted down. Baby Knight trying to get in a good position behind the Nexus to minimize the damage taken and is now pushing forward with quite a sizable force. Storm has now completed and as such, Morrow does need to be a little bit careful, but he's just going to pick up with those medevacs and run out of there with a lot of his units. But meanwhile, there is a drop going on in the main base. It is getting a good number of probes. It's doing some good damage. The boost ability being utilized effectively out of Morrow on those medevacs in order to get them out of trouble very safely. And in terms of the resources lost, Baby Knight now having lost about 800 more resources than his opponent. He's also sitting there with, well, he's been knocked down quite substantially in terms of his economy he's nearly leveled up in terms of the work account with the terran and as we're seeing morrow is just being relentless with this pressure and without the mothership core baby knight doesn't have photon overcharge for the nexus in order to make sure that he can defend it a bit better of course photon overcharge does hit air units as well as ground so it also makes a nice attempt at picking off medevacs as they are fleeing but as we're seeing now we've got the double forge being constructed in the main to con to restart that upgrade research and now a big wave of war pins coming in the main we do see the medevac charging in trying to get the drop nicely but of course there's just too many zealots there for the moment and now we see coming down to the third morrow trying to utilize this cliff area as effectively as he can but there's still some units there a good storm hit 
gets quite a few units and that does now clean up the threat for the moment. But down at the natural, there is yet more action going on. There's another double drop there, dealing some good damage. A feedback hits on the medevac, but doesn't have enough energy in order to kill it. But Baby Knight is now looking quite confident in his defense of this. That he's got units sitting there at every base. He's preemptively warping it as fast as he can. He does snipe off a medevac before it drops anything more than one single marine. And of course, the second medevac now does get taken down. So it would appear that, as far as I can see anyway, Everything has now been taken out for Baby Knight, and he should be safe for the moment. But of course, for the moment is a term that you have to use very, very carefully because Moro, he is macroing behind this. He's getting his Vikings out, and I'm surprised that he's committing to these Vikings quite so early because he saw he knew he knocked out the robotic facility and hasn't seen any robotics bay. So no, there can't be any Colossi as of yet. Of course, the robotics bay has now started, and all we're seeing that, yeah, this is now Baby Knight able to turtle up he's got the splash from the storm which means that pure marine marauder medevac won't help but the important thing now is these ghosts and we see five at a time getting produced so moro is really getting towards that composition and of course just in as in wings of liberty late game composition for terran against protoss is pretty similar you need to balance up your vikings and balance up your ghosts for the number of high templar compared to colossus and if you're able to do that then you will be in a good spot as long as you get a good engagement angle now we do see a medevac moving forward which is completely full luckily stopping just to resecure the watchtower and of course with only 29 health should there have been a high templar there or even a stalker it could have gone down and lost quite a lot but yeah the important thing to note is through all that drop amazingly Mario only killed seven probes through all of those attacks absolutely everywhere so all in all we're just looking around we've got the double colossus production coming down now for baby knight we've got a sizable army coming out for Moro, who does have a slight supply lead he's behind by five workers but of course the fact that he is operating off of four mules and is now getting up his fifth command center as well is in a nice spot baby knight is trying to take his fourth behind this as well now so they're both macroing up super heavily they're both going towards late game compositions we do have some archons morphing now for baby knight as well and he is getting extended thermal lance out but to be honest, neither of these players are really going to want to engage for the near future because they don't know what each other are going for. They're trying to get that late game composition that they want. Baby Knight is starting to move forward now, just taking a quick check, trying to retake these watchtowers. And these two watchtowers in the center of the map have been so heavily fought after. Both, especially this one on the left, both players really want to hold it because it gives a lot of information, especially if Moro holds it on the movements. And these two armies are actually going either side of the rocks, but it has now been spotted. A scan goes off perfectly for Moro to get an exact gauge of what Baby Knight has got. He's now moving forward. He doesn't have many Vikings. He does only have, well, he has six out, but there's only two with this army for the moment. The rest are trying to catch up. We do have a drop coming down towards the main base as well. There's a photon cannon there, and it takes out the Medivac which had such low health and it was still full of units. That is a big win for Baby Knight right there. And yeah, we've now got a good spread coming out for Moro, but Baby Knight pushing forward. He knows he's got the advantage right now. He's killing off quite a few of these ghosts, but there's still a drop coming towards the third of Baby Knight. There's also a single Marine down at the fourth trying to knock it away. But with the Zealots coming back towards the third, we will see Baby Knight clean this up while still pushing forward. He's being very aggressive, he's forced back Moro's army. In terms of the lost tab, Moro now has lost an awful lot more than that of his opponent. Worker-wise, they are very equal. 65 SCVs to 68 probes. Factoring in mules and the fact that now Moro is one base above his opponent, that does mean economically the Terran is in a good spot. It's just dealing with this very sizable force from Baby Knight. There's a lot of Colossi. The Vikings are in a nice spot. One falls near instantly. The second Colossus does go down as well. The Stalkers trying to focus those Vikings as quickly as they can. Of course, the Archons still pushing forward. Feedbacks hitting the Medivacs. Baby Knight. That was a pretty equal engagement. Of course, the three Colossi went down. One does still remain. There's one Archon there. But the Medivacs getting picked off were awkward for Moro because suddenly his infantry is not looking so strong. He's also had all of his Vikings knocked out bar one and all of his ghosts have now been killed. So that's the sort of position where I would call it pretty mutually destructive and it's just who can resupply the fastest right now. Looking around the map, we've got, of course, the five 
Yep, the five bases for Moro compared to the four bases of Baby Knight. And they it's still, it's Baby Knight being the aggressor. He still feels he's in a good spot. He's got a good number of Archons and he's just trying to get the right engagement angle. Moro getting that scan off. He is definitely trying to gauge, Can is this army coming in? Have I got a good spread on my units? And indeed he has, but Baby Knight is going to go for it. The Colossus at the back is really vital. Does get taken out though by that Viking. Some good storms hitting. So much of that infantry is just eating Psionic Storm right now. Of course, the Archons morphing behind this gives Baby Knight a very strong force to start pushing forward. In terms of upgrades, we are looking at a 2-3 Protoss upgrades compared to 2-2 two, two, and plus 2 ship weapons for the Terran. But of course, that slight upgrade advantage for Baby Knight could be enough for him, especially when he has a good 24 supply lead over his opponent. But, of course, that one mining base could be big. We do have a few goats here. They need to be very careful. Some EMPs do hit, but still, Baby Knight has just got so many Archons. The charge lots are running in. They are able to get nice engagements, a good surface area on that infantry, which is ever decreasing in size. The remaining forces chipping away at the third of Moro, and it is trying to get repaired, but there's just a good number of units here. So many SCVs go to the Orbital Command does fall and all in all I'd say that was a successful attack by Baby Knight. He is just pushing forward, he is trying to do as much as he can and he has n taken a nice lead in terms of the economy now. If he knows, once he finds out about this base in the top right which is He's not, he's not going to go up there, he's pulling back. He needs to know that this base is up here because the second he spots it, he will be able to happily take it out. It's just a planetary fortress, undefended. But instead, he's keeping the pressure on at the natural. He's trying to push forward. There's, there's now four immortals behind. There's five archons. Some feedbacks going down on the medevacs as well just to make sure that he can do anything and everything he can to keep this back. But the map vision for Baby Knight is just so hugely in f is so hugely better than Moro and he is now moving up towards this top planetary fortress and he is going to be able to take that out there should be a repair coming down shortly but it looks like these SCVs are going to try and run away as best they can knowing it's too late and so many SCVs and mules are getting taken down here this is a big loss for Moro right now meanwhile there's not really much that he's doing to be aggressive and all in all we've got more aggression coming forward Baby Knight, he has taken a very substantial supply lead right now. It's 180 supply all but one for Baby Knight compared to the 127 for Moro. Of course, we've got a great number of Archons and High Templar in there. Only four ghosts out for Moro at the moment. And of course, there's still those nine Immortals against 10 Marauders. So when you're looking at it that way, you know that you've got some problems. And of course, Baby Knight is just going to position himself around. He's going to try and take out everything he can. He's getting as much as possible. He's making he's still 17 workers ahead. And he's now trying just to get the right angle for this attack. Because it is still a scary force. But now Baby Knight has got a better concave. And there's Moro with the GG out. Baby Knight takes it in what was a lot of aggression. But consistent aggression that just slowly wore away of Moro.